Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I'm sure that you're interested in computer security just like I am. And one of the things that I'm excited to talk to you about today is how you can automate the configuration of an Ubiqu Ubiquiti Edge Router X using a generated PowerShell script. So what we're gonna do is basically grab some IP addresses from a blacklist, and we're going to automate the process of blacklisting those IP addresses using PowerShell as a script generator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a, a, a bash script, copy that bash script over to the firewall device, and then execute that bash script on the device using uh, SSH and SCP. So let's go ahead and get started here. So I've got Visual Studio Code here in front of me, I'll look at the extensions that I have by hitting Control shift x and you'll see I have Docker, PowerShell, and Python. We're going to be ignoring the Docker and Python, but just make sure that you have the PowerShell extension installed so that you can follow along. I'll hit Control b to close that sidebar there. And down here at the bottom, I've got my integrated terminal, which is also running PowerShell. And just so you know, I am running the PowerShell... Uh, desktop edition here, but the code that we're going to be writing today is not specific to PowerShell Desktop Edition. It should work if you have a Mac OS system or a Linux system, or if you're using PowerShell v7 on Windows, for that matter. So let's go ahead and get started here in my web browser. I've got this GitHub repository called IPSum, and it's basically an aggregated list of different IP addresses that are showing up on a variety of different blacklists. And if you drill into this file called ipsum.txt, you'll see that it gets updated on a daily 24-hour basis with the latest list of IP addresses that are banned by different blacklists. So starting up at the top here, we've got a header with the last update date and time. We're not going to be using any of the information on the header, but it is there in case you want to parse uh, when it was last updated. And we also have a list of IP addresses and the number of blacklists that they show up on uh, for, each, for each line here in this text file. So what we're going to do is use PowerShell to download this text file and then go ahead and parse the output for starters. And then once we've parsed the output, we can basically select you know, which IP addresses we want to ban on our firewall device based on how many blacklists it appears on. So maybe we don't want to ban all of these IP addresses because this file is absolutely massive. It's about four megabytes. And most of the IP addresses are showing up just on a single blacklist. It all depends on how... Uh, aggressive you want to be with banning different IP addresses. Uh, I wouldn't probably hesitate to ban all of these on my own configuration, but it also depends on uh, how much router processing time is involved with uh, banning all these addresses as well. So uh, you kind of got to weigh, you know, performance and security and, you know, usability of different services out there because maybe, maybe some of these IP addresses have legitimate services on them. So for starters, what we're going to do is just copy this URL, and then we'll come over to Visual Studio Code, and we're going to use the invoke web request command with the URI parameter, and just paste in our URI to the IP blacklist. And then we're also going to use this use basic parsing parameter, because if we don't specify that, you'll probably get a PowerShell error that says that the Internet Explorer engine is not available, and uh, so just make sure that you specify that parameter. And then we'll assign the result of that invoke web request to a variable like result. And if we just hit F8 to execute that one line of code where our cursor is located, you'll see that it downloads the file and stores it in this result variable. So next, let's take a look at that result variable. So I'll just create a new line with result dollar result on it and then hit F8. And we have this result object. And the property that we really care about here is the content property. And that actually contains, as you can see here, the contents of the text file that we downloaded. Uh, you don't necessarily want to download the raw con or look at the raw content property because that has a bunch of HTTP header, header information that we don't necessarily care about. We just want the contents of the file that we downloaded. So like I said, just look at that content property. So if we look at content, um, We'll go ahead and actually store this in a file locally just for caching purposes. Uh, I don't want GitHub to get uh, angry at me for or rate limit me for downloading this text file a whole bunch of times. So we're just going to uh, run set content and store it in blacklist.txt locally. Actually, I'll do 
dollar home slash blacklist just to be explicit and then the value of that text file is going to be result.content so we'll hit f8 there and just store that locally and we'll just do a quick uh get content home slash blacklist dot txt and then pipe that into select object first 10 so that we don't enumerate the whole file because it's a huge file we're just going to grab the first 10 lines from that file and as you can see we get the header here along with a few select ip addresses from the top of the list so our blacklist file looks good locally so let's go ahead and start processing the file so we're going to be using the switch statement in powershell which allows us to specify a regex parameter basically indicating that uh, any values that are matched against each line in this file are going to be matched against a regular expression and then it also allows us to specify an array so what we're going to do is actually run this get content command and pull in our blacklist file and store it in a variable like blacklist lines hit f8 there so now blacklist lines is basically going to contain an array of strings and each array element basically represents a single line in the file so i could go to like line number 98 for example which is actually 99 because it's zero based but uh yeah so line number 99 is actually this record right here so let's go ahead and specify this blacklist lines array in our switch statement and now we're ready to start working on the matching of these lines so because we're doing a regex match here we'll start off with a caret basically indicating the start of a line and then what we're expecting to see is basically an IP address so the simplest way to represent an IP address at least for this particular purpose is to specify slash d which is a digit character and then a, a quantity specifier so we're going to say quantities one to three so any, it could be one two or three and we're going to expect that followed by a dot and then we're going to expect the same thing again a couple more several more times here so we'll copy that and do one two three and then take off the period at the end because obviously the ip address doesn't end with a period so this is our ip address match is just you know one to three digits followed by a period one to three digits etc cetera, etc cetera. and we're going to use a regular expression technique called a named capture to just assign a, a user-friendly name to this capture so this is the syntax for that and i think i have a separate video on my channel about that topic so following the ip address directly we're going to have a white space character which we can indicate through a slash s and then because we don't know exactly how many white space characters some have one some have two some have three some have four etc we're just going to specify the plus quantifier right after that and then we're going to specify another named capture so that we can capture the number of feeds and we'll just call this um, severity for simplicity and then that'll be a digit specifier and it could be one digit uh, but if it went up to like 10 that it would actually be two digits so we'll just say one to two just to be safe there and then following that we'll have we'll close off the parentheses so that we have this named capture right here and then following the digit we'll have just a new line character so that'll be the end of the end of the string right so now that we've matched this let's just say if the severity so if matches dot severity and if you're wondering where this matches variable comes from when PowerShell does a regular expression match, it automatically populates this matches variable. So it's going to match this regex for each line in this blacklist lines variable. And then it's going to assign the match to the matches variable. So we can just explore the severity or the IP properties that we're using in the named capture, the regex named capture. So what we'll do is we'll say if matches.severity is greater than or equal to eight, I'll say seven maybe then go ahead and print the IP address out so we'll just say matches.ip so let's go ahead and just run this here our blacklist lines variable is already populated so I don't need to rerun line number four but I'll just select lines five through eleven and hit f8 to run the selected text and as you can see what happens is PowerShell prints out all the IP addresses that have a severity of greater than or equal to seven 
and it basically just skips all the rest of them and then it finishes processing. So that's why you saw a little bit of a delay there in um, finishing because it had to go through six, five, four, three, two, and one, one being the largest category, of course, and uh, basically just you know make sure that they didn't match this if statement here. So now that we've got the IP addresses here, what we need to do is construct a statement, a firewall modification statement that basically adds this IP address to our blocked address group. So what we're going to do is create a new variable up here called new lines. And this variable is going to represent the configuration commands that we're actually going to run on the firewall. So the for each IP address, what we want to do is basically say new lines equals new lines plus set firewall group address group blocked. And blocked is just the name of my address group that I've already created on my Ubiquiti edge router. And then we'll specify address and then the actual IP address. So we'll put a placeholder there using the uh, curly brace, zero end curly brace, and then we'll just wrap this in parentheses, and we'll add a new line character at the end. All right, so basically this is just going to construct this new lines variable, and after that, you can kind of think of the switch statement as being like a for each loop, so basically for each match in that file, it's going to add a new line that has all this text here. And we're just substituting each line, the IP address in for it. So we're going to have a big list of lines that have each, each, each of which has this, this command, this set firewall group command. So let's go ahead and run lines number six to initialize the variable all the way up through 15. And that'll just print out the result of new lines after we construct it on line number 10. So I'll hit F8. And it has to cycle through the entire file just to make sure that it looks for all of the severities greater than or equal to 7. And as you can see here, we have set firewall address group blocked, address, and then a whole bunch of IP addresses. So now what we need to do is get this into a bash script that we then copy over to the firewall device and ultimately execute. And that'll just reconfigure the firewall for us automatically. So what we need to do is start by building out a script template. And on the firewall device, there is a shell called vbash. And that's because the Edge OS that runs on Ubiquity devices was forked from uh, the Viata OS, uh, which I believe is a Linux open source um, firewall operating system. So we need to basically call vbash here. And then we need to source this other script file that basically allows us to use the configure and commit and save commands inside of the firewall device. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my browser here. And I believe I have a tab open right here where I have that command. So I'm just going to grab the source command here from line number eight on this script and paste it in here. And so now that we've sourced this script template thingy, it's going to basically give us access to the configure, commit, save commands, etc. So we'll do configure, commit, save. And inside of here, between configure and commit is where we're going to inject our generated firewall group modification commands. So what we'll do is say script equals this here string. By the way, the syntax you see here, at sign open, uh, sorry, at sign single, <laughs> single quote followed by a line on its own with a single quote at sign, everything in here is called a here string, which is basically a multi-line string in PowerShell. So this is our, our script template for the bash script that we're going to generate. So then we'll do script dash f script equals script dash f and then new lines. So we're basically saying for this placeholder here, use .NET string formatting. That's the dash f operator, .NET string formatting. And then on the right hand side, we have item number zero, which is basically just going to get substituted here for line number 23 in the here string. 
And so let's go ahead and just echo out script after that. So we already have new lines defined, so I'm just going to skip everything before that and basically just specify and basically just run lines 17 through 31, which creates the template, substitutes the firewall modification commands into the template, and then spits out the template after modification. All right, so in our terminal down here, we have our header here, configure, the generated list of commands, each with an IP address, and then a commit and a save command. So now what we can do is basically just save this script off to a file. So I'll do set content dash path edge os 2.sh, and then the value is going to be dollar script. And then just to be safe here, I've had some issues with some special characters getting added. So I'm going to do an ASCII encoding and specify the no new line parameters. And it, we might run into an issue here. Uh, so let's go ahead and just run F8 and then run code in our terminal. We'll run code edgeos2.sh. And that's just going to open it in Visual Studio Code so that we can do a quick visual examination of the file to make sure that it looks OK. So sure enough, our headers here looks good. We have our firewall commands. Then we have commit and save at the bottom here. All right, now we're ready to run the SCP command to copy it over to our firewall device. So I'll run SCP edgeos2.sh, and then my firewall followed by a colon just to copy it to the home directory there. So if I run F8 here, you'll see that we copy over that file to the firewall successfully. So let's go ahead and verify that the file looks OK on the firewall, because it is a Unix system, not a Windows system. Sometimes there's issues with some of the characters in that file. So I'm going to switch over to my Windows terminal here and bump up the font size for you. And I'll just go ahead and do an interactive SSH session into my firewall device. So if I do a quick LS here, I'll do a VI on EdgeOS 2. And as you can see here, there is some corruption in this file. I'm not exactly sure what's causing this. I've had some weird issues with this. So what we're going to do is come back to VS Code. And instead of using set content, what we'll do is do system.io.file, write all text, edgeos2.sh, and then the script value. And then we'll just uh, re-SCP it again. All right, so let's try VI here again. And we're still getting these um, control characters, these new line characters. So I think what I might be able to do is change VS Code to line feed. That might fix things. Let's go ahead and just regenerate our script. So I'll run lines 17 through 31. And then we'll rewrite the file to the file system and SCP it back over, and let's view it again. OK, so for whatever reason, using the system.io.file uh, write, write all text static method seems to work OK. You can see we don't have any weird characters here at the beginning, and we don't have any control characters for new line characters, so that's good. Otherwise, that'll cause issues with uh, vbash executing the script on here. So um, we're not actually going to execute it on the firewall device because we actually want to automate the full process end to end, right? I was just using the interactive SSH session to basically validate with VI that the file looked OK. So now what we're going to do is run SSH, uh, copy my username and IP address here, and then we're going to run chmod plus x edgeos2.sh. So that's just going to make the script executable on the remote device. Hit F8. And sometimes VS Code gets hung up here with SSH commands. I don't know exactly what's causing that, but I did file some feedback on that just this morning. So I'm going to switch over to Windows Terminal and just paste that command in. And sure enough, we can see that we have chmodded the file. I'm just going to ignore my terminal now because that's broken. 
And then we're going to copy that line down using Alt Shift down arrow. It's an easy way to just take the current line where the cursor is and just copy it down. And then I'm just going to quickly modify this to dot slash edgeOS2 to actually invoke the script remotely. So I'll just copy this line over to Windows Terminal, again, just because the VS Code terminal is broken. And you can see what's happened now is we ran into configure mode. We're running all of those set commands to inject the IP addresses into the address group. And then we're running, running the commit and save commands to commit our changes to the running configuration and then saving the configuration to our boot configuration for the device. So we've basically used PowerShell to download a blacklist to save it locally just for testing purposes. You don't necessarily have to save it locally if you don't want to. I just did so I avoided any rate limiting on GitHub. And then what we did is we basically processed each line using a regular expression to parse out the IP address and the severity or how many blacklists each of those IP addresses showed up on in the aggregate view. And then what we did is we generated a bash script and then copied it to the remote firewall device and executed it using SSH. So you should be able to run this from Mac, Windows, or Linux. PowerShell runs on all platforms. And we haven't really used any Windows-specific functionality here. We've used just generic PowerShell functionality and generic utilities like SCP and SSH that are common on pretty much any system these days. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational for you. If you have any feedback for me, please leave a comment on my videos. Really love the likes and the subscribes. And I hope that you guys will recommend some other content you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for viewing. We'll see you soon.